Welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel from Woody Working With Dash and today we're going to make a curved end cutting board with a curved juice screw with no CNC. We're going to do it the old fashioned way. We're going to swing a router. I'm going to go through exactly how I make the router jig, cut the board and do the routering for the juice screw. So let's get with it guys. Let's make a cutting board with curved ends and curved juice screw. Should be fun guys. Let's go. Sorry to interrupt, but I've got a favour to ask. In my next video, I'm going to be doing my top 10 jewellery boxes that I made. So it's going to be a very, very long video. Channel's struggling at the moment. I'm not growing much at all. And it's very hard to keep making videos like this if I don't grow. So I'm just asking you for a favour. If you can just uh, watch a bit of it, or just leave it on overnight. It'll be about three hours long. So if you can just leave it on while you go shopping, it would just really help the algorithm push me out to a lot more people. Other channels have done this and it's worked well for them. If you haven't already, please subscribe because I'm really struggling for subscribers. I'm really struggling for watch hours. Thanks guys. Now back to the video. A curved end cutting board with a curved end juice screw. Doing it my way of course. Now we've got to glue up the board. We start with some rubber wood and some uh, walnut. These are finger jointed plantation timbers that I get from the big box store. They normally sell them as like bench tops. Great for making cutting boards and they're at a reasonable price too. And I'll highlight it with a timber called Jarra. It comes from Western Australia. They also grow plantation Jarra now. So it's good to use too. So it's good to use sustainable timbers in our woodworking guys. I cut the slabs down to 40 mil. And I did that on my uh, little saw I think. But <laughs> if you watched the last video, you, you would have noticed how I bragged about getting a uh, blade from Amazon real cheap for my for my table saw and um, I checked out the price. I was going to save myself 100 bucks. Well, the blade came. Wrong borehole. I've got a, a 30 mil arbor away from the United States with a 25 mil arbor. I hope you enjoyed the trip, but they didn't send it back. Damn. Anyway, I'm waiting for the Black Friday specials now. I'm such a cheapskate. I'm waiting for the Black Friday specials now before I order the new blade. So I order another blade for Friday. In the meantime, I'll, I put in one of my um, older blades with the blunt as the other one. So we'll cut these down to 40 mil now on the small saw, on the small battery operated DeWalt saw, and we'll take it from there, guys. This saw works really well, guys. Battery operated, it's got a very thin blade in it, but it works really well. Look at that. Cuts through it like butter. Building the board up there. And with my precision equipment, my precision cramps that are finely tuned. Best cramps you can get. Look at that. Bit, a bit more tuning there. <laughs> Another glorious day in the shade. Cut the board out of the craft now, guys. We're just whacking for the planer now. The planer down to 35 mil, and we'll trim the ends up. And then it's just a normal square board. And then it's time to make the swing jig. This is how we're going to put the curved ends and the curved juice boards into the board, guys. Come that well done through the planer. Isn't that really nice? And just checking the thickness now. I can't measure it, but I can't see the measuring tape. Damn, getting old. And docking it on the uh, on the crosscut saw there. The board plane down now, come out great. And I trimmed the ends up. I cut it to 420, that's the size I cut my cutting board that. And did you notice? I got it down to 35mm without using a tape measure, but they just use a bit of 35mm pine. But that's what we're going to make our swing jig out of. So 
All we have to do is, is make sure that's the same thickness as 35 mil. This is another trick of the tray, guys. So, the next trick is now, is to make our swing jig. It takes a bit to make, but once, you, once you've made it, you've got it. It's just another jig in your, in your arsenal that you could use. And as we go along, you see it's not that complicated. I'm just going to explain how I make this jig step by step. You're going to start with the baseboard. I made mine out of a bit of charcoal, 16mm MDF I had laying around. And I made it... I made it 770 by 550. That seems like a good size to me for a cutting board. You will see later that it can, you can do the small cutting board and also the large cutting boards with the arc. The next step is to cut two side bits of pine, 70 by 35, 770, the same, the same length as the, um, as the jig. That sounds pretty good to me. We'll do that first, guys, and we'll, and we'll set it up, and then we'll do the next step. Okay, cutting the pine. And drilling the fittings holes in the, in the pine to fix it down to the board. And just fixing away there. Put the board in. All I'm doing is sandwiching the board in between a lot of pine. That's basically all I'm doing. I got the board firmly secured onto the backing plate. I just wedged it in there with all the bits of pine. I leave gaps in the uh, in the side pieces for sawdust if any sawdust accumulates in the corners there's somewhere for it to go otherwise it builds up in there sometimes meet the board and find the the uh the center line of the board and then we'll mark a line right down there just down the board to begin with and then we're going to put a bit of pine we're going to put a bit of pine at the other end of the board extending as far as what we want so everything is up on the same level. We'll put a centre line and then extend it out into a bit of pine. And that's going to be our centre line for our arc. If that makes any sense. I probably won't need the extension piece for this project, but I need it for other projects. So that's why I made it that long. And just screwing it down there, but the screws are on the side, you see that? Not in the centre. And just uh, extending the centre line now, down through that piece of pine. Okay, the main jigs are finished now. We've got the board security locked in there. Then we're going to start on the second part of the jig which is the router part. So first of all, you need a router. I'm just going with my little Osito cheap router that I got from the big box store. But once it's set up, I'll just leave it set up. I don't use this one very often. And for the, for the plate, for the timber plate, I'm going for a bit of 6mm ply. You don't want anything too thick because remember, you've got to go through all the timber and the plate and lock it into your router. So there's, there's a lot of meat there. And for the cutter, I'm going with an upcut spiral quarter inch bit. I normally go for down cuts, but uh, I want to clear the groove, because we're going to do this in multiple passes, but the cutting board is 35 mil thick. We're not doing that in one pass, guys, I give you the mail. We're going to do it in about 10 to 12 passes, so we take a little bit at a time. That's my whole philosophy in woodwork. Just take a little bit at a time and don't put your tools under pressure. So we've got all the components now. Uh, six mil plate. I made, I made mine about 800 long. So now we've got to draw a line straight down the centre of the plate. I made mine 150, so I'll draw a line 75 mil down. We'll mark where we've got to draw a hole. Okay, just mark it all in now, down the centre line. Drawing a about 40 mil hole. About 70 mil in, I think. And screwing the router onto it. Just drew a couple of holes in the router. Little screws. I marked the centre line down the, uh, the plate. 
and I drilled a 40 mil hole in the centre line of the plate. Ah, oh, no, about 70 mil in from the end, and then I, I screwed my router on. So now we got our router fixed to our plate. We have a centre line, and we got the cutter in the router. I put the cutter in the router. So we're almost ready to go. So we, all we've got to do now is to judge our pivot point. So we'll, we'll put the router on the um, on the jig now, and we'll find our pivot point. Okay, just using your finger as a uh, temporary pivot point to see what works. That's not much of a, much of a uh, arc. And I go closer, that's a bigger arc. That's better. Yeah, I think that will do then. About there. So just put a screw in there. And now I'm going to find the uh, centre line. Make sure it's not too long. And just screw it down. There you go, I've got a pivot point. There you go, everything works. Alright, my first cut. Just a very small cut, just to make sure everything works well. And you notice how I pick it up and bring it back. I don't go back through the groove. Pick it up and always push, push forward. Second cut, through the pine too, doesn't matter, it's looking good. That's it from a distance, and now the final cut. And I have two widgets left over, which will come in handy in a minute. You watch, keep them, don't throw them away. But I use them for the other end to push it hard up to the board, but I can't adjust the centerpiece, can't adjust the um, that backboard because of the pivot point. We have now a um, curved end cutting board. Look at that. Come out great. Now we've got to put in the juice groove and now we've got to use two different jigs. I've got to use my my straight jig that I normally do these cutting boards with and the centre of the juice groove from the edge is 27 mil. So around the curve the centre has got to be 27 mil. So now we have to shift the router. So now we have to change the cutter in the router and we've got to shift the router back and then put stoppers in so we, so we can't muck it up. Okay, just drawing a line, 27 mil in. And using the wedges now to uh, get it all in position. But I've taken a bit off each end now. I've changed the cutter and now going, going back 27 mil. You see that? I went forward to the router. That makes the router come back. Only on the on, only on the router plate, the pivot point always stays the same in the bottom board. I'll say that again. The pivot point always stays the same. Don't never adjust the pivot point. Okay, just putting in the stops now. Setting it up. There you go. Can't go anywhere. Turn it on, drop it in the centre. Go back on the forward. Don't let it stand in the one position because it will burn. All done. Now I'm doing the uh, straight groove with the other jig. Put some stops in there too. All done. Now just putting a half round over all the board. Just to break all the edges up. And 
and around the curve it goes. We're almost there guys, come up great and I've rounded it up with all the edges. So all we've got to do now is sand and oil and we're there. It's been a bit of a journey guys, but I'm glad I made my curved juice roof. You see that it's not that hard, you just got to do them in the steps, do them in steps. And uh, you can just about do anything you like. I like to make a lot of curved shop fittings that way. Doing it, uh, swing in, swing in the router. It's an old traditional way of doing it. So we'll just sand this up now and we'll give it an oil. The oil on there, already popped the grain. Look at that, guys. I should get a table that's steady, shouldn't I? Yeah. I should. Anyway, it's all kind of up well, look at that. Great, that looks great, doesn't it? To the edges. We're well, all done. A cutting board with curved ends and curved juice grooves with no CNC, guys. Came out great, really nice. Took me all day, but it came out really nice. Just goes to show that you don't need all the big fancy equipment to do um, complex work. You can, you can do them the old-fashioned way, like we used to do before we had CNCs, with routers and jigs. But it's, come out great, come out great. Thanks for being with me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this long video about how to make a curved end cutting board. And please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next show where we'll be making probably another cutting board. But as, as you know, my way. See you guys.